Who likes to get stepped on? You like to get stepped on, don't you? Yes, you're a naughty box. Oh, hi. It's Hails and Fails. Heathens and welcome to the channel. I am JD Blute, your heathen goth daddy, and this is Hails and Fails. For those of you that are new here, Hails and Fails is my gear review series where I talk about the goods, the hails, or the bads, the fails, of any particular piece of guitar-related gear or audio-related gear that I can get my little hands on. Today, we are going to be talking about this wonderful little machine here, the Mellow Audio MIDI Commander, coincidentally enough, from Mellow Audio. I'm going to do this a little bit differently to my former Hails and Fails videos. I'm going to give you the overall up front. First of all, it's a hail. Why is it a hail? Let's get into it. The very first thing I want to point out, and I'm not sure that you'll be able to pick it up, This thing is 100% solid steel, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, it is absolutely solid, built to last. I still wouldn't trust that new roadie you picked up at the diner to throw this around, but it'll definitely survive wear and tear in a road case, on stage, in your production studio, wherever you happen to go. This thing is absolutely solid. I will also say, as a sort of adjacent, the pedals are incredibly strong. I know this because I stomped on one without shoes. The pedal still works. My foot still has an indent. One weird little fail I'm going to give also off the bat, construction-wise, before we get into the features, these little pad guys here. They are not hard rubber. In fact, I do believe they're actually plastic now that I'm inspecting them. And the problem I have with that is very simply, at this price point, this is not necessarily something you're going to take on stage. Meaning, you're probably a bedroom producer, rocksmith streamer, uh, or somebody else who doesn't necessarily have access to things like gaff tape and proper staging. I find this moves a lot because these guys aren't the soft rubber pads that you're probably expecting on a unit like this. In fact, I really think they're just here to get it off the ground for whatever airflow. It doesn't get, the unit doesn't get very hot, so I'm not really sure. And also to help the angle because it is 10 pedal setup, five and five. I would have liked to see the softer put foot pads on this thing. Sorry, while we're talking about construction, one other hail, you guys can see. That screen, maybe the video doesn't do it justice, but let me explain how it works from a performance standpoint. When you're sitting here and it's on your desk, you can see that it's on my desk now. When it's sitting on your desk, everything that you need to see is clearly laid out and available to you. When you put it on the floor or in your performance setup, the stuff you need to see is important and the stuff that you know is just going to work because you programmed it properly is out of the way, and I absolutely love that. We'll get into a little bit of a use case. I'm sorry I don't have a, a dual camera setup, so we'll have to do this the old fashioned way where I just show you. In sticking with construction, it's very simple here. You have an ex two expression pedals. You can buy any expression pedal you want. Mellow Audio obviously recommends theirs. I did not get that, so I can't show you the function of these, but you know, I imagine they work like any other expression pedal. You can also, use a standard MIDI out to any of your actual hardware devices that are MIDI capable in that way. I'm kind of pausing here for a little bit because I don't really want to fail this, but I found it very weird that the only direct supply of power is USB. If you are using it to work with an actual MIDI hardware device, I feel like they want you to use the battery power and this runs apparently for 20 hours on two, I believe they're double A batteries. I have not tried it, it doesn't make any sense for my use case, so I can't guarantee how well it works and I'm not gonna speak on that. I will say, of course, this is my USB cable and the power has not flickered once, there's been no issues. It does get kicked around during my performances a little bit. The 
USB cable is locked in fairly securely, and I don't really have any other issue other than the fact that it does slide on my floor a little bit. It makes switching from lead channel to, say, clean channel a little bit more difficult, and I have missed that more than once. But that's really all I can say about construction. Where it absolutely hails as well, and the reason I'm recommending it overall, is the variety of applications you can use for this. Again, I can't speak to hardware out because I don't have any. I'm a plug-in guy. And I have used my ToneLib GFX plugin. I have used my Neural DSP, which we're actually going to show because that's my main use case. And I downloaded the trial of Bias FX2, and it works with this as well. And I'm giving kind of like a half a fail here, so I won't do the graphic. The instructions for this thing kind of suck, kind of a lot of suck, but it's not that difficult because this is so prominent in the music community. You can find actual instructions for your use case. For example, they have uh, Mellow Audio provides for Axe Effects, Bias Effects, um, a whole bunch of other stuff. However, for the for Neural, I was surprised they didn't have any instructions. I actually had to Google them. I was expecting to do so for ToneLib. Fortunately, the forums at ToneLib were very helpful, but the Neural thing really shocked me given the impact Neural's had on the music community lately. Not a shill, just wanted to point that out. What I will say is this offers the ability to do both control change and program change depending on your use case. I myself am only a program change, and I found with ToneLib, you actually have to set this thing up in control change because that's the only MIDI application that they allow. Not a big deal, just a little at first confusion, if you will. So that's a lot of me talking without a lot of me playing. So I'm gonna do my very best to show you what we've got going on as we go picture in picture. So here we are, picture in picture. I have my Neural Granifier plugin up, and for the purposes, I have already logged in. How you do this is very simple. You ch For Neural, you actually hold D and press the power button. I can't do that all at once. So you're holding this down while the unit is off. You press the power button and it will come up ready to go with the custom two mode on the MIDI commander, which is apparently what you need for Neural. No idea, had to Google that. And then it's basically a case of using it as a foot switch. Now, you can toggle so many things. I am a very simple user. If you need any instruction or any help, please do leave me a comment below. I'd be more than happy to get you going in the right direction. But for my use case, I simply do preset changes. That's all. You do have the ability to turn effects pedals on and off with program changes and control changes. That's not what I do. I do have that a little bit on one of my other plugins, but I also found out that it was more annoying than I wanted to do. So there's no point showing that. <laughs> so let me just grab a guitar and I'll show you what we're working with. Guitar grabbed. As you can see on the Neural, I have the little mushroom, which is the MIDI symbol. So this preset is midi and I happen to know I put it at position one. The one thing to note with the MIDI Commander, and I guess with all MIDI, but I'll point it out anyway, is you definitely have to realize that there is a program change and a control change number zero. So the pedals may be A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, but you have to understand that that's program change zero, one, and two. Zero, one, two, and three, sorry. Math is my strong suit, of course. As you can see, we're on setting one, and that sounds like this. Pretty straightforward. So now if I'm thinking, if I'm on the fly, and maybe the song changes, or maybe I'm not exactly 100% happy with my tone, and I want to change it up, I simply press the second assign button, which is B. You're working with the bottom row exclusively, unless you have more banks. I only have the one bank. Again, this is a very simple use case for me. So we press it, it'll go to two, and what you'll see on the screen is that it went to another preset. It's now the Rabia BF4, it was, it was a special preset he did for Black Friday, with my custom cabs in there, so it's gonna sound a little bit different. Not really.
really showing off my tones, but there you go. So you can see very simply. And then again, one more time, of course, for repetition's sake, press it to position three. I am showing off a little bit here. I was involved in Unity Shredfest on June 3rd, and this was the amp and settings I used for my Power Wolf set. I gotta be honest, that's basically the extent of how I use the MIDI Commander. Of course, there are a number of other applications you can use. Again, like I said, you can use a control change to turn off and on different pedals, different effects, depending on what your setup may be. You can use the expression pedal. I just found that was a little too much for, again, my use case. I know I've harped on that a lot. However, this is priced at 189 Canadian dollars, so not a hell of a lot. There is a reason this is so prevalent in the, I'm gonna say beginner slash home performer market. It is an absolute beast. It has not let me down other than the slipping, and it just works. One thing I will find is if you're a plug-in fan like me, there is a slight, slight amount of latency that I didn't show, but if you're in a live situation or, you know, streaming, for example, which is still technically a live situation, you are going to get, I think, obviously you can minimize this with your buffering settings and whatnot, but the way I have that everything works for me, I get about a, maybe half a second delay, not the absolute worst. And again, I use some pretty heavy plugins and effects and stuff in my live stream. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to fail it at all because again, there's so many different variables as to what could be, what could be causing that. Overall though, like I said, bang for your buck, absolutely 100% go get it. The instructions are a little difficult. Leave me a comment. Let me know what I can help you with. That would be fantastic and I would be more than happy to get you going in the right direction. I'm JD Blute, and I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Hails and Fails. JDBlute.com for all of your me needs, and I stream at least three times a week, twitch.tv slash JDBlute, and I do hope you enjoy. Let me know if you pick one up. Have a killer rest of your day. Be safe. Be consensual. And if you can't be good, well then sweet Satan on a pogo stick... For Baffy's sake and mine, be good at it. Bye, everyone.